They may not be able to afford one, so some of them just put up the antenna without the set. The number of dummy antennas seems to be about one in 20. If you work in the office, you usually have higher status than if you work in the plant, but you have to pay for it. You can't carry a lunch pail anymore, and a lot of people carry their lunch to work in briefcases. And in the special society of Hollywood, your status may depend on your going to the right hairdresser, the right dressmaker, the right restaurants, and living in the right neighborhood. So, a promotion may mean you have to spend so much money keeping appearances that you end up worse off than you were before. This is not only true in Hollywood. The point, I think, is clear. Everything isn't necessarily lovely for people of high status. The role that their society expects from that status may make them do things they don't like doing. And it may stop them from doing things they want to do. Although, of course, we think high status well worth the price we have to pay for it. There's another point come out here, too. The status of the late King George VI of England and the status of the priest King Kukulu from West Africa was roughly the same, each in his own society. But the role expected from the status of king was very different. The same status in a different society may mean a very different role. So much, then, for the different roles expected from a given status, for the discomforts of status, and for the kind of a status a man is born to. Now let's consider the different ways the status can be earned. There are two principal ways, by doing things and by getting things. That is to say, you can get status through skill or through property. The skill may be that of doing without things, asceticism, which has always given high status in Christian and some Near Eastern societies. Similarly, the property may be no property. Deliberate vows of poverty have sometimes given high status, especially in societies where wealth is very much respected. But in most societies, it is very often the useful skills that give the status. Consider the Eskimos, for instance, living under conditions that demand the very utmost for mere existence. In this society, hunting was important for a man and household skills for a woman. My father and my mother were both very respected people. My father was the greatest seal hunter among many families. Nobody was better than my father at crawling along the ice while the seal was resting, then lying perfectly still and quiet while the seal lifted its head and looked around, only to begin crawling again as the seal lowered its head. So that my father nearly always drew close enough to kill the animal at once with the beautiful harpoons he used to make himself. So we always had plenty of meat. And my father was very skillful at cutting out the snow blocks for the igloo where we sat in the evening while my mother worked. She was much respected for the seal skin and caribou skin clothes she made. She was specially skillful at sewing the seams with sinews so that they were waterproof. Moreover, her teeth were worn down almost to the gums with chewing my father's boots to thaw them out in the morning and make them comfortable to wear while he was hunting. Oh, you could tell just by looking at my mother's teeth that she was an expert and hard-working housekeeper. These things made my father and mother very important, and it was very fine to be one of the children of such people. Our society, too, attaches status to the husband being a good provider and the wife being good around the house. I will say this for him. Everything he touches turns to money. He's one of the smartest operators I ever heard about, and handy around the house, too. And his wife and children get anything they want. Of course, she keeps them looking beautiful. They live right next door, you know. And she still has time to put up all kinds of fruit and vegetables, and I don't know what else. And well, you know, I don't loaf about in bed much myself, especially on washing day. Well, I can tell you it's very few Mondays that she hasn't got her things all out on the line before anyone else. Sometimes I think she must almost do her washing Sunday evening. <laughs> We, too, give status to the man and woman who have domestic skills. But these are not the only things that give status. Being a football star or being able to play the violin very well or being able to tell stories. All these things can give a man status in our society. And in other societies as well. Take musical skill, for example. Well, the people of Bali are probably the most musical people in the world. Even little children of four or five are playing in the orchestras. Night and day, the island is full of music. 
The little gongs and the chimes, the beautiful small bells, and the stringed instruments are sounding through the trees. Even their names sound like the instruments. The kinong, the gambang, the rebab, and the chalampung. In our society of Bali, it is a very great and splendid thing to be a musician. So much so that even our princes used to envy the people who played together so happily in the orchestras, which they could not do because of their high rank. So they would solemnly divest themselves of the princely status they were born with so that they might earn the status of a musician, only resuming their royalty after the performance was over. So much then for status acquired through some kind of skill. And of course, for every status acquired in every society, there is an appropriate role. Come over here. I'll show you a skill you'd forgotten about. And I'll show you a role, too, that might surprise you. Look. Where are we? This is Samoa. Look at the young man talking to the girl. Ah, the art of courtship. See the lovely presents I've brought for you? Oh. Look at those fish. I just told them you were going to be eating them, and they practically jumped out of the water of their own accord. Oh. Let me have the hibiscus from your hair. Ah, oh. oh, please. That's better. Tonight there will be a moon, but after the moon has set, why don't you come down to the beach? Oh. Where the three it's quite true. Skill in courtship fish gives fish status in Samoa I just as it does in many other down. places. Not in every no place, end. but as you say, in For many. But Samoa problems. seems to ask a suitor to play very much the same role as we ask. Nice I only feel too. sorry for that young man way know? over under the trees who looked so forlorn. Has he no girlfriend? Samoa does not ask a suitor to play the same role as we ask. That forlorn young man you mentioned is the suitor, as prescribed by Samoan society. Then who is this making all the sweet talk? That is the suitor's friend. It's his job to make the girl look kindly at the young man. And if you watch closely, you'll see her glancing at him every now and then. So it looks as if he may be successful. Remember what Priscilla said to John Alton? Why don't you speak for yourself, John? This is a question that is not asked in Samoa because of the role demanded of Samoan suitors. So you see, even where the status is much the same, in a different society, the expected role may be vastly different. In most societies, you can acquire a status by doing something, and you can also acquire it by owning something. In our own society, perhaps this is the highest kind of status, for we often feel that a man would not own a great deal unless he were able to do a great many good and useful things. Consequently, we feel that the status to be got by ownership may well include all the other kinds of status, and so is to be counted best of all. And what about the role? The role? Why, well, we all like to act as if we had a little more money than we really did. And that is the role, except, of course, for very rich men indeed, who are so rich that they can pretend to be poor if they want. Ours is not the only society that gives status to wealth. Though what constitutes wealth differs from one place to another. In Africa, among the Baila, we hear this. I am a very wealthy man. I possess numerous cattle. But among the Manus of New Guinea, we hear... I am a strong man, for I possess many dog's teeth and pay high taxes. And the Indians of the Pacific coast of both Canada and the United States pay great attention to property. In the south, in California, there are the Yurok who say... A good Yurok stands up for his rights and keeps his mind on spiritual things like money. Dentalium shells, obsidian blades, and woodpecker scalps. But further north, on the coast of Alaska, there live the Clinkit Indians. They, too, attach great importance to property. But a man shows his status not by keeping it, but by giving it away. In the right sort of way, of course. As a man in our society might try and improve his status by giving large, conspicuous tips and spending money lavishly on things that are not really useful and that he buys only for the purpose of impressing the neighbors. Ah, that was how it was with us Clinkett in the old days. That was how it was when we could give a potlatch. Well, what was a potlatch? A potlatch was a feast. A feast in which a man built a great fire and invited everybody to come. All his friends. And his enemies. A potlatch was to show what a big man he was. He built the fire, and then he threw on it blankets and copper shields and allowed precious oil to pour on it through special spouts. 
Loudly, he would point out how rich he was. And he would give away all kinds of presents to his guests, as much as he could afford. Oh, but of course, they would have to give him presents in exchange. They might try, but he would hope that they wouldn't be able to repay him. Then they would all lose face. His family would applaud him and encourage him. But his enemies and the men he wanted to impress would pretend to ignore it and pretend not to notice that anything special was happening. Occasionally, the fire would burn up so mightily that the other people would all get burnt. And sometimes one or two were killed, for they would much rather die than retreat from the flames. Why? Why? Because then, of course, they would acknowledge that they had noticed something, that the display had made an impression on them, and then they would lose face. Far better to be burnt to death and make the other man lose face. Oh, a potlatch was a glorious thing. So there it is. Every society is marked off into different kinds of status. Every society has its own way of arriving at status. And you've probably noticed its own way of rewarding people who have got high status. Furthermore, every society expects from each status a particular kind of behavior, a particular role. Each society has its own rules for determining status and its own rules for determining role. But some sort of status and role are everywhere. on these programs is to emphasize the main ideas. That is the usual role of the professor. But it seems to me that the show pretty well speaks for itself. You too have status, or rather many statuses, and each has its proper role. This paint point came home to me when I first became a professor and realized that the students expected me to behave in certain ways, to be strict about grades, but sympathetic and judicial about personal problems. I had to learn it, because it confuses everybody if you don't play your role properly. Sometimes this is hard because we have different roles at different times. Did you ever have the problem of role conflict? In our society, we have friends at work and friends at home, perhaps a special group of old buddies and the like. These different associates may not know one another. In each of these groups, you have a status and are expected to act in a particular way. Sometimes these ways are not alike, as when you were a child and were afraid your mother would baby you in front of your friends, just as she did when you were alone with her. This kind of situation is an old gag in the theater. Status, then, is a matter of position, and we all have a number of different statuses, one at home, another at work, another in a club, so on. However, in our minds, the important thing is how high we stand in these situations. And, of course, what it takes to stand high and how we must act when we get there depends on the culture to which we belong. Dr. Walter Goldschmidt, Associate Professor of Anthropology and Sociology of the University of California, Los Angeles, has concluded All the World's a Stage, a study in status and role, a program in the series Ways of Mankind. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. <laughs>